tests are a part of our spiritual life, but they're a little different than the ones we take at school. God tests and trains us so we can grow to become who we're meant to be. In Genesis 22, verse 1 through 2, it says, Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. God will test us just as he tested Abraham. But the sooner we accept these faith tests are happening, the better our chances of passing. Here are three signs I know I'm in the middle of spiritual testing and what helps me embrace the process. One, I'm feeling inadequate. Judges 3 verse 1 through 2 says, These are the nations the Lord left to test all those Israelites who had not experienced any of the words in Canaan. He did this only to teach warfare to the descendants of the Israelites who had not had previous battle experience. When we lack the necessary skills or qualities for future success, God provides the test capable of developing those qualities. This is exactly what he did with Israel in Judges 3 when they lacked the ability to fight. What vision has God laid on your heart for which you find yourself totally inadequate? I know when I feel inadequate, I don't usually respond with the mentality of wanting God to train me for a bigger vision. I would rather act like I already know what I'm doing or quit before I can fail or embarrass myself. Yeah. Fantastic, let me see it. No way I changed my mind. I'm sure what you've written is fine, just let me see. No, don't look, it's not ready. But when I'm focused on the vision God puts on my heart, I don't care how inadequate I am or look. This is how Joseph approached the testing he went through. In Psalm 105 verse 19 it says, Until the time came to fulfill his dreams, the Lord tested Joseph's character. Joseph had a lot of dreams, but was too immature, selfish, and entitled to be the kind of person who could live out those dreams. God tested and refined his character for years until he was capable of living living out a vision bigger than he even imagined. Joseph learned to embrace this process. Two, I'm feeling irritated. Psalm 26, verse one through three says, Vindicate me, Lord, for I have led a blameless life. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind, for I've always been mindful of your unfailing love and have lived in reliance on your faithfulness. God wants us to welcome testing. I hate that. I don't know about you, but I am not someone who just embraces painful testing with open arms. I know the pandemic has been a huge test for me. At times, I found myself super easily irritated and just questioning God. I don't know that way. Why would they change math? Ah, math is math. Okay, math Dad. is math. Why would he let this happen? Why do we have to all go through this? And a lot of it is I just hate not being in control. When we invite him to test us, it's in recognition of the fact that we understand he does it to know us, to make us better, and ultimately to save us. When we let go of control and trust God, we can learn to enjoy life even when it's hard. In Psalm 84 verse 5 it says, Blessed are those who make you their strength, for they treasure every step of the journey to Zion. When we make God our strength, we can treasure every step of the journey, even the hard ones. Someone in the Bible that was a great example of this was Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mary went through a lot of testing, but chose to trust and embrace the process, which led her to changing the world. Check out our Paint Me a Picture narrative podcast series, Because She Believed, which breaks down the story of Mary. We'll put a link in the description below. So if you've been feeling irritated, stuck, or restless, that's a really good place to be. Take some time to think about who God is trying to help you become. Three, I'm feeling inspired. First Peter 1 verse 6 through 9 it says, In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The test or training itself is not the end goal. It just gets us to where we need to be. If we have a clear vision of where we want to go, we will look for and embrace testing. Reading 1 Peter 1, 6 through 9 makes clear that the end result of our tests and faith is the salvation of our souls. I don't think this is limited to just going to heaven, but rather the type of person we become, which Jesus also talks about in Matthew 16, verse 24 through 26. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? 
Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? There are a lot of things that can make us feel like we've gained the world. On the surface, none of these things are inherently bad, but when they become our only focus in life, then we run the risk of losing our very soul, the essence of who we are and who we're meant to be. When we live a soul conscious life, we embrace our tests with the confident joy that comes with seeing these moments as opportunities for innovation and doing good. You can't even overcome your fear now that your friend is about to die. Your unheroic body will never let you save Jake. <laughs> You're right. Then there's only one thing left to do. No, wait, no! no! This was how Jesus saw his hard times. In Hebrews 12 verse 2 it says, We look away from the natural realm and we fasten our gaze on Jesus who birthed faith within us and who leads us forward into faith's perfection. His example is this, Because his heart was focused on the joy of knowing you would be his, he endured the agony of the cross and conquered its humiliation and now sits exalted at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus saw purpose in his pain. His heart was focused on his relationship with us and helping us grow, and that made everything worth it. Who are the people in your life who you want to see grow? How can the testing or training in your life help you come closer to them? For this further study, I would recommend reading the book of Job. This book is about so much more than just suffering. Job is the story of a man of God who faced inexplicable suffering without disengaging from or giving up on his relationship with God. He passed the test, and you'll find when you read, it worked out pretty well for him. I don't know. I never thought I'd get this far. So let's take encouragement from his life and fearlessly embrace the opportunity to be faithful and receive God's blessing whenever we are tested to. Be sure to check out the full devotional, it's linked in the description below. And share this video with a friend and share what you learned. And while you're at it, subscribe to the channel and like the video. It really helps us to keep making content like this and to reach more people.